Hello, Whitman Hanson. This is Jenna Cardus, and this is my co-host, Letty Garcia. We are here on behalf of the mock trial team interviewing state representative candidate Josh Cutler. Mr. Thank Cutler you. is the Democratic candidate for the 6th Plymouth District. Mr. Cutler, could you please tell us a little about yourself? Sure, I'd be glad to, and thanks for having me. Thanks to everybody here for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, I'm Josh Cutler. I'm running for state representative for our district, which is Hanson, Pembroke, and Duxbury. I have a small business here in Hanson. Uh, for the past uh, ten, uh, 10 years, been publisher of the Hanson Express, the Whitman Hanson Express, a local newspaper here in town, so I know what's going on and I know our issues well. Um, I have uh, two young children. I have a six-year-old son named Charlie who just started kindergarten, and we have a, a two-year-old um, named Delilah who's uh, very <laughs> precocious and charming but uh, running <laughs> around all the time. So I um, have a young family and uh, grew up here in this district, run a small business, and I think I have uh, the right mix of experience to be a, an effective representative for for folks of all ages, including yourselves. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, thank you. And now, on, and now for some questions regarding your political views. Budget cuts in our school district have repeatedly put the jobs of our teachers at stake, as well as risking many of the unique programs offered by our school. How do you plan to support our local education system? That's a great question. It's probably one of the most important issues that we're facing. I know here in Whitman Hanson we've, we've had the brunt of budget cuts. You know, we've had, we have fewer teachers than we did before, and that's affecting class sizes, and I'm sure um, a lot of other uh, in th things here at the school. So the number one thing we can do is to increase local aid, and that is um, the lifeblood of our cities and towns budgets. Um, and when we're cutting local aid, as we have the last five years, it puts enormous pressure on our cities and towns, either to increase taxes or reduce services. And um, local aid coming from the, the state um, really helps to alleviate that problem. And because we're a regional school district, obviously, um, it's even more important here, even Whitman Hanson. So. I'm going to be someone who's going to be fighting to increase local aid. Um, the good news is this year, this coming budget year, is the first year we're actually we're seeing local aid back up on the uptick, on the increase. Um, so we're not out of the economic woods yet, but we're, you know, we're, we're getting around the corner, and I think we're going to see um, local aid continue to increase. And if I'm your state representative, I'm going to make sure that I fight every day to make sure that it does. The district currently budgets over a million dollars in transportation. Because Whitman Hanson is a regional school district, the district cannot legally charge for busing of students who live a mile and a half more from their schools. Regional transportation reimbursement from the state has not been fully funded at 100% and we cannot charge for transportation. As a result, the district pays for a major portion of busing costs. In order to save teaching positions, the start times of schools, the high school, Conley, and Duval, were adjusted to reduce transportation costs and save teaching positions. This has resulted in an early start time, which is challenging for students and staff at a high school. What do you plan to do about the laws regarding regional transportation? That's a great question, and uh, early start times is an issue that I know um, it affects folks. You know, uh, at, a younger, at, a, at a younger age, your bodies just aren't ready to get going at that, at that time of day, and so it doesn't make sense on a lot of fronts. But um, the last time, this is a classic case of what we call an unfunded mandate. The state has said, okay, you're not allowed to charge fees for school bus transportation, but we're also not going to fund uh, fund what, what, what our share should be. Uh, the last time, in fact, that the state funded, fully funded what its obligation was, was 2001. So we're over a decade that the state has not met its obligation. So they're telling us what to do, but not giving us the funds to do it, which is, you know, a classic unfunded mandate. So we need to change that. What we need to do is have a minimum threshold so that we can tell um, folks here that make up our school budgets that you, we, we, you can count on at least this much money for school bus uh, and regional transportation funding. Um, that's the minimum we need to do. We need to get back to the point where we're fully funding our obligation. Okay, when, when we make a promise, we need to keep it. And um, one of the things I'm going to do as your next state representative is there's something called a, a regional school caucus, and it's made up of legislators that represent uh, regional school districts throughout the state. And one of the things we need to do is to voice, you know, to, to get together and voice our um, power to, to make sure that when we're making our budgets, that regional school districts do not get left out of the equation. And so I've already spoken to the person who's the head of that caucus. I'm going to join the regional school caucus so that we can. And there's more regional schools than you would think. If you start g going around the state and counting them all up, there's actually a number of them. And so if we work together uh, and work in unison, I think we can be a voice to try to change those formulas and make sure that we're fulfilling our obligations. So absolutely. There has been an increase of in the number of clients being supported by our local food pantries. Do you plan to grant um, aid to the food pantries? Yes, I've actually been. Um, working on this issue already before even becoming involved as a candidate for state representative. Um, I'm on the member of the Hanson Kiwanis, and we've sort of taken it on as one of our projects to try to help 
uh, the Hanson Food Pantry. I know uh, Paul Nickel and a number of other folks who are in, here in town are we're in the process of, of um, moving the food pantry from the church to the um, Plymouth County Hospital project. We're going to rehab that building. Um, there's a you know unfortunately we think of you know in a town like Hanson that everyone's doing okay, but they're not. There are people who need assistance and need uh, and do rely on uh, food pantry. And uh, it's the case in all of our communities. I see it in Duxbury and in Pembroke and in Hanson. All three towns have food pantries. So um, absolutely yes. No, unquestionably, I've already made donations. I've already given my sweat equity, and I will certainly be someone who will continue to do that. And I think it's important to note that I, I've been out front on doing that even before I was running for office. I think um, sometimes folks during an election year, tend to, you tend to see them around a little bit more, and then they don't, they don't show up uh, after yeah. the election. But I've been someone who's been um, you know, walking the walk and talking the talk for, <laughs> for a long time. Um, how do you plan to help small businesses in our town? Sure. Well, I run a small business in our town, so I'm definitely interested in helping small businesses in Hanson and throughout our district. Uh, we have an office down on Route 27 in Hanson, and um, there's a number of things we can do to help small businesses. Um, one of them um, is trying to help uh, reduce the uh, increase in health care premiums. That's a big issue for any kind of small business, um, as you'll learn when you, when you get out of school. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's so expensive, and for a small business especially, the way the rates go up, you know, I've seen my insurance rates go up 15, 20, 27 percent a year. And so that's just um, a crushing blow for a small business. So that's one big thing we need to work on. Another one is um, access to capital, allowing small businesses who need loans um, or startups, people who have an idea and want to start up. Um, it's very difficult to get a loan in this economy. And so trying to do, do there are ways we can um, help small businesses to, to get access, you know, creditworthy small businesses to get access to that capital that they need. Uh, and finally, we need to be um, cognizant that there are sometimes the state passes regulations that are, are not friendly to small businesses, and we need to make sure that the voice of small businesses is heard when we're doing that so we're not burdening our small businesses with too many regulations. Um, just to add, uh, just specific here to Hanson, one of the things I've been talking about during the campaign that I think is very important um, is the Route 27 business corridor. Those of you you're familiar um, down by the train station, yeah. not too far from here. Um, it's an area that's, in, in my view, is sort of underdeveloped. We have um, a, a, train st a train stop there. We have um, the Dunkin' Donuts, so we have all the, the, the key <laughs> ingredients for some economic <laughs> development. But unfortunately, we haven't seen anything take hold. And I know there are folks in, in Hanson and town government that are working on that. And I see the role as, um, of state representative to be a, someone who shows some leadership and tries to work with our town leaders to, to uh, find a solution and see if we can attract some new businesses down there. I think it would be a perfect magnet for um, some uh, uh, redevelopment and uh, you know that would really help um, a to bring in more property taxes so that we're not relying you know on your parents to pay you know the foot the bill for for all the town services and b it would you know it serve as a, a way to create jobs in our area so um, that's something locally that I really, really want to try to prioritize and, and work on <coughs> would you support the legalization of medical marijuana you know that's um, my the short answer is no although I've, I'll be honest that's an issue that I struggle with because I, I have in my family you know, experience. I, I lost my dad last year to cancer, and it was a difficult time. And I'm, I'm sure I know every family has unfortunately been touched by that in some way, or knows someone who has. And so, if there's ways we can help people who are suffering, I'm all for it. I think in this particular case, though, there are alternatives that are safer than uh, allowing that to happen. We've seen in some other states where it, that has occurred is it's had some unforeseen side effects in terms of creating you know shadow markets for for drugs. Um, we have these dispensaries that pop up. Um, and so it's not, unless it's very well regulated, it can easily get out of hand. And I think for that reason, I wouldn't be in favor of that. Um, I think also um, from what I'm seeing, there's actually ar artificial uh, marijuana that people are being made, you know, able to prescribe. So there are alternatives out there that we can use that are safe and legal without resorting to that. Um, although, you know, again, I am very sympathetic because, you know, anyone in that situation, we want to do everything we can to, to help them. Would you support the legalization of prescribing medication to end the life of a terminally ill patient? That's another one of those questions that unfortunately I've had to deal with in my own family. And um, if, the, if the right safeguards were in place, I would. Um, there's a ballot question on the ballot this November um, that would actually uh, um, tackles that issue. And I'm going to vote against that ballot question because I feel like there aren't enough safeguards in the legislation to protect mm -hmm. someone um, who might be mentally ill or might uh, have a situation where an insurance company is taking advantage of someone who's in a, a vulnerable position. So um, I think I'd like to see the issue happen. I think we can do a better job than this ballot question. And so my view is that um, I'm going to vote against that and then as a legislative legislator work to try to craft a legislation that will achieve that same objective, which is a noble one, to help folks, again, who are suffering. And again, I, unfortunately, I've had this happen in my own family. But do it in a way that protects folks um, without, um, you know, leaving insurance companies in charge of making life or death decisions, which I don't think is what we, any of us want. 
So um, I'm a reluctant no, but I do, I do, I do support the, uh, the concept. <laughs> Lastly, why do you want to represent the district? Sure. Well, you know, my, my, um, my parents instilled in me this idea of, of serving the public, public service. Um, back in uh, 10 years ago, I started, you know, I launched the Hanson Express with the idea that we wanted um, to help try to serve uh, the public here in Hanson by having a newspaper that would, you know, share what's going on in the community. And uh, I've been, uh, it's been my privilege to run the paper for the last 10 years, and I think we've done some great things, and hopefully we've shined a, a positive light on some of the activities that have gone on here in the schools. Um, newspapers also play an important role in terms of, you know, keeping everybody uh, honest and, and shining a light on town government. And so I've been serving, trying to serve the town's interest for the last 10 years doing that. And I, so s I, s I see this as a natural extension, um, serving in the legislature, working to advance the causes that we care about here. Um, I want to put my small business experience to use um, to help uh, create new jobs and, and fight for our schools and make sure that, um, you know, that my kids and your kids and you, well, not your kids <laughs> yet, but uh, <laughs> you guys and your parents, um, you know, we continue to live in, a, in an area that, you know, that's, that has a great quality of life and that's, that's what's great about living here on the South Shore. So I'm really excited and passionate about doing the job and uh, I've knocked on lots of doors. Hopefully I've knocked on um, some of your folks' doors and have uh, gotten to know me mm -hmm. and um, I have the right experience and I'm um, certainly very uh, much my heart is in, is in this job, and I look forward to, to earning everyone's support. So. Thank you for coming in. Well, thank time. you guys did a great job. I know you're, you're all a little nervous here to go on, but that was easy, right? Yeah. Yeah, this was terrific. So again, thank you all. Thanks all for, for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you want to learn more, uh, my website is joshcutler.com, or if uh, you can find me on Facebook as well, or on any other Twitter, social media, <laughs> Pinterest, I'm on them all. So all right. thanks very much. That's all we have for today, Whitman Hansen.